Well, it's sad that I'm making this video for the third time. And, uh, you know, because the second one, second one was a good video. So, uh, first off, yesterday I had a good day. Today, so far, I've had a good day. You know, I've done I've done my best to uh, to fight the temptation of sin. I've been tempted today. I was tempted yesterday, and uh, oh man, let me put my window up. So, uh, but you know, like I, I, I really think that if you watch this video, that you should that you should share this video. I mean, you gotta rightly divide these scriptures, and I don't know the scripture number. I just, I just want. You, I'm just gonna tell you what what I what I what I was talking about yesterday, and and see. How could people believe the falsehoods that they believe out here? Okay, so first off, we were all evil in the womb, correct? We were all evil at youth. The only reason why I'm saying that is so you can see how we were and why was it? Why was it? Sin. Because basically we were gonna we we came out of the wound and we and if we never found Christ we were gonna be we were gonna be evil, sinful, iniquitous, unrighteous, ungodly, lawless, and wicked. All that all synonyms of wicked. So uh, you come to Christ. And you start living for him. You know, I, I know people use certain scriptures out here, but the scriptures they're using out here are when they were that are are referring when they have Christ, not turning to Christ or if you lose the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm sorry that you people don't want to believe the truth. I mean, I never lied when I sit here and said that God told me we could lose the Holy Spirit. See, the thing is. I've asked God to try to help me in a way where I could give the truth out here and people could see it and, and could see through the hogwash of the falsehoods and stuff that had been preached at the church. Just like when I was in Oklahoma City and God put it on to me after I asked him something that night that the law was never taken away. See, there's there's one falsehood. There is one falsehood right there. That it is finished, meaning the law was taken away. It was never taken away until you receive the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that brings you out of the law. But you don't receive the Holy Spirit when God, when when Jesus went back to be at the right hand side of the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit. To, you didn't receive the Holy Spirit. You had the Holy Spirit in you. You have to activate the Holy Spirit in your life. Before I go any further, just because you get convicted does not mean that you are right with God because everyone, I still believe to this day, I've, I've, I quoted this a few years back, that I believe everybody out here at one time or another has been convicted of sin. Uh, it doesn't make a difference whether... Uh, You've murdered someone or you're going to murder someone. I mean, I'd like to know the percentage of all the women out here that could admit that they had conviction when they were going to have an abortion. But I don't I'm not trying. That's just an example. That's just an example of when someone would get convicted. And uh, and there are people out here that that are, that are Christians that believe that they didn't do nothing wrong if they did have an abortion. That They didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, they did. Um, but um, <laughs> what people really need to do is they need to look at all the scriptures in the Bible when it's talking about sin. All the scriptures in the Bible talking about sin. Because uh, iniquity, sin, separates, separates us from God. Okay. I don't know why people think 
that it wouldn't separate you if you went back to living the lifestyle you did before you gave your life to Christ. I don't understand that. I mean, you get convicted, but I've seen, uh, it may be about the same conviction, but I know right now that if God gives you up to sin, you're not going to get convicted because God gave you up to sin. He, he's, he's basically wiped his hands of you people out there that are in sin and you think there's nothing wrong and God and people have twisted God's word saying what was right was wrong today was wrong is right today turning a truth into a lie God gives people sin it's right there it's right there in his word but when you think about all these scriptures, the wages of sin is death, but then it talks about Christ. You have to have Christ for the wages of sin, not to be of death no more to someone. But I just found a scripture and I thought about it a few days ago. And I can debunk any of you that believe that Jesus Christ took your present and future sins away. I can debunk it 100%. And it's all in God's word. So how many pastors out here lie to people? And how many of y'all lie to people out here saying you couldn't, uh, that Christ died for your present and future sins? Now, let me clarify it before I go any further. The only way Christ died for your present and future sins is if you come back to him after you after you backslid, fallen away, or went apostate. So, uh I mean, I have to cover everything. You have to rightly divide these things. Just because it doesn't say that if you fall away, that you that you you could be forgiven, correct? I mean, you know that you can be forgiven. Um, I mean, some people out here will profess you can't be forgiven on certain sins out here. But I, like, the reason why I wanted to I wanted to make this video over again. Let me ask you: Why do people say all sins the same? It's not in the Bible. Some sins lead to death. Some don't. It's right there in God's word. Okay. Now let's think about this. So Jeff here. Never came to the Lord. Even though he was a good person. And didn't sin all the time. Didn't willfully. Well, I mean, I, of course, Paul does say willful. As if any time somebody does sin, it's willful. But. I don't have the thoughts that people out here do. I don't sit here and think that every day I wake up, I'm going to sin. If people out here want to, you, you took that upon yourself. So, uh, I mean, you literally took that upon yourself. Because just because it says that you'd be a liar if you say you don't have no sin or you don't sin, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to wake up every day and you're going to sin every day. I mean, I went one day without sin when I was in New Mexico. You guys, believe it or not, that's your choice. I didn't have no bad thoughts and I didn't do no bad actions. And that's the only way you can sin is a bad action and a bad thought. So, uh, but it sits there and says some sin, some, sin, some sins are covered under love. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, no. Let me, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Okay. Jeff never came to the Lord. Treated everybody nice. Would I make it? I wouldn't, would I? I wouldn't. Okay. And I'm not even work. I'm not even talking about work salvation because I, I didn't come to Christ. I didn't have no intentions. Okay. So, uh, you would say that I would not make it, correct? Well, that would be a person that has never turned to Christ. Now, why would it say that some sins are covered under love and others lead to death? But yet, you guys already know the scriptures that sit there and say these sins lead to death. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, the book of Ephesians, Galatians, the book of Revelations. There's other places in the Bible. And on top of that, I think it's Galatians says, and then some. 
So basically, it's saying that you have to use your conviction to know what's wrong out here when you're going to do it. You can't really use your guilty conscience guilt trip because that's after the fact. But I wonder why people out here don't have godly sorrow to repent. I'm wondering why people don't have, they say they have godly sorrow, but if they had godly sorrow, they would be living a repentant life. Uh, repenting of wickedness in the book of Acts is sin. Just like unrighteousness is sin and sin is unrighteousness. Confess of your sins to be cleansed of all unrighteousness. But yet it says, unrighteousness is sin and I think book first John but I, that's kind of weird after Jesus Christ going to be back at the right hand side of the father that if you're in sin you're unrighteous and what does it say you deserve God's wrath excuse me we deserve God's wrath but why does it say that some sins are covered under love okay and then it says some sins lead to death and others don't okay so that would mean not all sins the same what I'm saying is, if I if I committed a sin, fornication, drunkenness, whatever you guys want to list, I go to the lake of fire, and I could see someone cussing and not going to the lake of fire. Now, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to ever use anything like that because the more you cuss, the more habitual you get. The more you cuss, the more hypocritical you get. Because if you think you're living for God, you think you're saved and you're going to church, but yet you're a cusser. And you open yourself up to sin and you get these demons and you do more sin out here. Guess what? You're habitual. I mean, hypocritical. And then you're unrepentant on top of it. Then you're unrepentant on top of it. But I'm still trying to figure out, do you not see that if you do not believe that you don't have to repent, you're part of the problem? You're part of the problem, the reason why this is a wicked world. You're part of the problem. Because, again, this goes back to Jonah. This goes back to Sodom and Gomorrah even. If Sodom and Gomorrah had repented of their sins and their wicked ways, I mean, wouldn't he have taken one person? I think that was when it was. One person, two person, three person, ten people? Yeah. But he couldn't find nobody that was good, that was, uh, well, it's strange. Back then, people were righteous because Abraham was righteous. Uh, but I don't want, I don't want to talk about that. I mean, I'm not going to ever, uh, decline, de ever say that anybody could do this without Christ. Um, but, uh, so you, when you sin, you have an advocate to the father. Doesn't it say that? And it's talking about Jesus Christ, isn't it? Now, why would it sit here and say that if you keep on sinning, you lose your sacrifice in the book of Hebrews? Now, I know so many people are going to do what they normally do. They're going to say, well, the rapture didn't come around to the 1800s. And then all of a sudden, the next person says, the rapture didn't come around to the 1800s. And all of a sudden, the next person says, the rapture didn't come around until, until there's a whole group of people out here. The rapture didn't come around to the 1800s. Well, okay, it's a same as even once saved. Somebody out here brought up that falsehood and look what it's done. Look what it's done. Look what it's done to people out here. So what would they say about that scripture? I mean, I've already witnessed people say, oh, well, they, they were talking to the Hebrews. They were talking to the Hebrews. Really? So we weren't supposed to learn anything about Christ or, or Peter or or uh, or anything before Paul came into the picture. So repent or likewise perish doesn't mean anything. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That didn't mean anything. Well, I'm glad people can sit here and say it didn't mean anything, but they're kind of fooled, aren't they? Um, uh, 
Well, no, I'm not glad. I mean, that, that's on them. That's free will. If you want to believe that stuff, if you want to believe that we weren't supposed to take every word of the word of God and acknowledge it and put it to our walk with Christ, then then you're you're fooling yourself. Satan's got you fooled somehow. Satan's got people fooled. But of course, like I said, God gives people over to delusions. And there's enough Christians out here that have delusions. They think they're right with God, saying they got visions and dreams, but they they speak a falsehood. God isn't going to let someone sit here and say, you know, if you could learn at a later point in time that you could lose salvation, then I don't think that God uh, would uh, give you up to sin or a delusion unless you're preaching a lie to people. Or you're practicing it. See, God will bring anybody to him that has a heart enough to willing to listen to what his word says and be obedient. But most Christians out here don't believe they have to be obedient. And you know what? If you think you don't have to be obedient and you think you can practice, you can practice sin and be lawless in, in a worker of iniquity. If you think that you can lie to people out here and lead the sheep astray. God's going to give you up. Sure is. You know, a lot, a lot of people out here in certain denominations, like uh, Muslims, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Do you know who you know who God goes after? The one that has a door cracked just a little bit, just enough. And you know what? Most Christians have given themselves up to man's word. That's where their faith is at, is in man's word. There ain't, there ain't nothing, there ain't no door to open. I mean, most of them have a seared conscience. That's why, literally, you could have the word of God right here. It says, if you practice sin, you're lawless. Or you're a worker of iniquity. Who do you think that's talking to? That's not talking about atheists. Or if you keep on sinning, that you lose your sacrifice. That's not talking to atheists. It's not talking to atheists of any of this sort. Very little of the Bible is talking about atheists, about a person that doesn't believe in God, people. I'm telling you this right now. If you are disobedient, you're living in unbelief. It's right there in God's word. If you're a disobedient Christian, God tells me to repent, and I never repent. I just live like the world. You know what he's going to do. You know what he's going to do? Since I'm living for Satan, he would do just like he does to these Satan worshipers out here that can sit here and, and pull out a card and they can get things from Satan because God gives them up to it. The, 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 had people out here not gotten things from Satan, how did they get it? Because they wanted it. Well, guess what? What are Christians out here want? When they're living in sin, lying, and all this. <laughs> and literally, sin, uh, sinful, and don't even care. And it, 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 I'm telling you, you opened up a door, just like I've opened up that door since 2015. I don't know how many times. I mean, today's been good, like I said. I mean, I'm telling you this right now. You have an advocate to the Father when you're a repenter. When you repent of wickedness, your sin out here, you have an advocate to the father when you confess of your sins and you are of the light, but that's your doing. That's your doing that you're of the light. You're of the light. It's conditional salvation. It never has been unconditional salvation. Too many people out here, like I said, are preaching a lie. I mean, I'm talking the biggest pastors out here. The, so many people out here on YouTube literally preaching a lie. It is conditional salvation. His people crucify the flesh. That is putting their sins to death. If you got tempted, you turn the other way. I mean, but most Christians don't do that. And they don't even think that if they are in sin, that they should ask God, hey, God, could you deliver me of this simple thing I've got, this addiction I've got? I've been guilty of it, people. I'm guilty. Guilty and charged. But guess what? 
I come to the light, I'm covered under the blood. I stand under the darkness, and I do not inherit the kingdom. Got to be of the light to inherit the kingdom. You got to be of the spirit to inherit the kingdom. Or if you don't, you're going to die living for the flesh. You think you can get drunk? Oh, I know you can drink a beer. But you think you can get drunk? You think you can get high? You think you can be a drug dealer? You think you can be a fornicator? You think you could be a, well, I hate to say it. I mean, really, I don't, I mean, I might as well throw the wor some of the worst things out there. If you think you could be a child molester and think you're going to inherit the kingdom because you believe and you say you got faith and, you, and you're and saved, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 if I could break a penny up to about as a million pieces, one piece is about as what faith that is. About the size of a mustard seed. Ha! Ah! Ah! Ha! That's actually a little bit bigger than that, but yeah. That's about how much faith a person would have out here if they were living for God, saying that they're living for God and they're not. Modern day Pharisee. I know what a modern day Pharisee is. That is one that says that they're living for God. But they're not walking the walk. Outer appearance change. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. I'm going to church. God bless. And then you open up the, the closet and see all the skeletons fall out. The inner, the inner change didn't change. So, all these people talk about God's going to look at the heart. Yes, he is. And guess what he's going to find darkness of their father the devil yeah what am i hey let me ask you do you think i'm being too harsh to tell the truth i mean can you can you imagine can you imagine that i i'm sitting here telling the truth where have i been out of line here where have i been out of line so you don't like it because you think you may have this problem and you don't like it because very few people have the ear to hear uh People just want to live in sin. There's a reason why God, multiple places in the Bible, said not to hang around with sinners. I mean, literally, when you turn to Christ and you and you 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 get that regeneration, renewal of the mind, you're a new creation in Christ. You you walk the straight and narrow from there on out. If you want to step back out and start walking the broad path to destruction, you never lost your free will. You never, we, we never lost the free will. And uh, why does Jesus deny people, workers of iniquity, lawless? He never knew them because they never knew him. If they knew him, they were living for him. Then they'd be crucifying their flesh, denying themselves. Picking up that cross, but they're not picking up the cross. They'll say they're picking up the cross. They'll say they're crucified with Christ. Cru being crucified with Christ and crucifying the flesh are two different things. Being crucified with Christ, I truly do not know what it means. And that's irrelevant. What's relevant to me is that I know if somebody, if I was back in Oklahoma City, somebody said, man, Jeff, I've got some killer weed, man. I mean, I'm talking killer weed. Y'all want to hit some? Man, you know, um, can't do it, you know? And and if, if somebody came up and tempted you and you you went along with it, uh, yeah. Well, if you're a drunkard and you don't inherit the kingdom being a drunkard, you don't inherit the kingdom being a pothead. You don't inherit the kingdom being a uh, coke, uh, acid, shrooms, pills. I mean, if you don't if you don't need pills, you don't take pills. I mean, I'm sure there are people out here that that could actually use marijuana. And I'm not hurting no one. I'm not hurting there. You think I'm putting down people? I've still seen Christians out here say that if you that that if uh, if, if if you smoke marijuana it doesn't make a difference. 
but I can't go there. I can't go there. I'll tell you this. If you had marijuana, a license to smoke marijuana, <clears throat> and you went somewhere and someone said, man, you know, I know you got a license to smoke. I know you smoke. You want to hit some of this? Then I would say you're wrong because you shouldn't be participating with someone else that shouldn't be smoking. I mean, I think that sounds about right myself personally because, I mean, uh, I, either way, I'm, ne I'm not going to condole it. No way. No way. No way. And those are sins that lead people to death. Tells you right there, do not be deceived. They do not inherit the kingdom. If you do those sinful things, you do not inherit the kingdom. Yep. And that's the sins that lead the people to death. I don't know what sins that don't lead to death, but if you want an advocate to the Father, you'll turn from sin because you'll find out. Uh, he'll say he never knew you when you find when you're a, a, a worker of iniquity and lawless. If you're out here lying to people, saying that there's a once saved and they could do whatever they want, you don't have to repent, you don't have to submit yourself, you don't have to. I mean, there's people out here. Believe me, I. I, I nah. Jeff, you said you would never bring people's names up. You weren't going to talk about people no more. So I'm not going to bring it. I'm not going to bring this person's name up. And this person actually thinks that they're getting a message from God. They're not. They're not. And look at all the followers. Hook, line, and sinker. I don't know what to say. And guess what? I'm sure they're just like this person and they're going around saying the same thing. Oh, and did I not find one person that was a follower of this person that said, oh, you can smoke marijuana. Oh, yeah, you can smoke marijuana. It was it was so strange. Had 96 thumbs up and not one thumbs down. Not one thumbs down. How many people out here have the truth in them? Well, I'll tell you, it's very minute. There are. And it's very minute. Very little. Comparable to 7 billion people, it's pretty good. Comparable to 100,000, like that one guy said, I can't remember his name. He said one out of 1,000 people is what he thought. God showed me 3 to 4% of the population. This other guy said 1 to 3% of Christians. Do I think these numbers can change? I sure do. But as long as people are going to remain in sin, live in sin, practice sin, then they are of their father, the devil. Now, how could someone not be rightly dividing this and wonder why it says that you can lose your sacrifice? And I can promise you this. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit convicts someone. It wasn't for nothing. There's a reason why those same Christians don't get convicted that are in sin and believe there's nothing wrong with it. You know what? Like I sit here and said, um, this will probably be a two-part video of because uh, I have another thing I've got to say, and I don't know if I'll ever get there. Again, there was a video of a, of a pastor that didn't believe in once saved. But he went to believe in once saved. He went to school, became a pastor, started a congregation, preached to these people, and had a vision or a dream. Now, I don't know if it was a future vision or a dream or a present vision or dream of people that were in hell. I don't know if it was people that were already in hell because they listened to his message and had died since then. Or if it was people that uh, in the future and he saw these people in hell because of the message that he was preaching. And uh, then he, and he was the very first person that ever talked about the seared conscience. And he said, when these people that believe in things like once saved, they get a seared conscience, it will almost take an act of God to bring them out of it. That, And I think that's the reason why I could have it right here in front of your face and say, look, look, look. 
and they don't have the ear to hear. There is a scripture, I think, in the Bible. It's around wisdom. Uh, if, uh, somewhere, I'm telling you, if, if a person should start reading the Bible anywhere in the Bible, the, the very first book of the Bible that he should read is the book of Proverbs. I already know it. The number, the, if, if, if a person started reading the Bible, you start, start at Proverbs. People do not fear God out here. That's the problem. You feared God, you would have understanding with wisdom that God would give people that fear God. But, uh, uh, you know, I may be able to get this whole message in. Yeah, I got like eight minutes. Uh, there's a guy that made a video and uh, I watched it and uh, he talked about a spirit of disobedience that it's in the Bible a spirit of disobedience now I'm just in this video he's talking about Katy Perry because Katy Perry's parents were supposedly religious but they were hardcore hardcore and a lot of people that are hardcore ain't really living for God because they blow things out of proportion. A lot of people do. Uh, Catherine something is what her real name is. Man, I just had it. Steve Spencer or Spencer, uh, Spencer something. You guys have seen his video. I know somebody out there has seen his video. But he made a video where he talked about that there's some scriptures in the Bible talking about spiritual uh, disobedience. Oh, oh no. Okay, I'm up. Waiting for a door to open. Where's it at? And I can't pause this phone. It don't have a pause button. Spencer Smith, YouTube Spencer Smith, and find the sad story of Catherine Hudson. Catherine Hudson is Katy Perry. In the first 15 minutes, he'll bring up a scripture name and talking about spiritual disobedience. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out here that know the truth, but they don't want to accept it. And that's a lot of Christians and a lot of other people. And uh, I think it's more for someone that does that knows the truth than it is for someone that doesn't know the truth. Because like I said, it's better off not to know the truth than to not be living for God. It's better off not to know the truth than to know the truth and not be living for God. That when it talks about that in the book... Uh, when it talks, I think it's a, a dog going back to its vomit or shipwreck, which is Christians that were saved. Uh, the book of Ro Romans 1. Romans 1 is talking about Christians. Romans 1. Rightly divided, people. Romans 1 is talking about Christians. I already I found that out on my own. And then I found somebody else that made a video, and I never watched it, but it said Roman 1 was talking about Christians. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, something's wrong with this world right now. But if you want to be covered, you want to be covered under the blood? You want to have an advocate to the Father? You want to make sure that your sins don't lead you to death? Then you'll repent of your wickedness, confess of your sins. And ask God for forgiveness. Now, think about this. Think about this for a moment. Find the scriptures in the Bible that talk about unrighteousness. And see what it says. It, and, and they're in the New Testament too. Strange. Christ took present future sins. Hmm. Nah. Never happened, people. Never happened. All sins? Yes. You give your life to Christ, you, all your sins have been forgiven. But you go back into living a life of sin, 
that 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 the chapter of Hebrews comes up. The book, the scripture in Hebrews comes up. You keep on, keep on, keep on sinning. Two script. There are two scriptures. I hope I'm not twisting whichever one, but it doesn't make a difference. They're both talking about sin. It doesn't make a difference. You lose your sacrifice. No Holy Spirit, not of his. If you lose Christ, you do not have the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit, not of Christ. So if you don't have Christ, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 9, again. You have the Holy Spirit, you have Christ. You don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have Christ. The only way you can lose salvation is losing the Holy Spirit. That is the only way. If you're watching this video and you believe you can lose salvation, and I know you can. Again, God told me, driving to Kentucky one day, that we can lose the Holy Spirit. And the only way that you can lose salvation is by losing the Holy Spirit. And then you wouldn't be of Christ. The wages of sin would be death. And Jesus is going to deny, deny. I mean, he's already going to deny anybody that's, that denies him. So those, those people that say, look what I did. You know, isn't it strange? I said this in a video. I'm going to say it again. You really have to think about this, people. If you got denied, you're, so many people think it's work salvation is who Christ is talking about. It's not talking about it. I'm not saying that it's not talking about some people out here that believe in work salvation. But I'm telling you right now, Jesus is denying people that thought they were his. You know, uh, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Like I said, they yet to be have, you have to have the Holy Spirit. That's the whole, that's the whole, the whole end of the story. It's having the Holy Spirit and being born again. You don't have the Holy Spirit and you're not born again. But uh, look what I did for you. Okay. Let me tell you this. Every Christian out here, if they got denied, it doesn't make a difference whether you believe in works, salvation, or whether you don't believe in works. If you got denied because you're a lawless worker of iniquity, you would say, man, well, I went to church. I mean, man, I'm telling you, I I, 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 I brought everybody I knew to church. I mean, I, 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 I read the Bible a hundred times. Uh -huh. uh -uh. Not me, <laughs> uh, but I, but I, but, but I did, but I did this. So it sounds like at the end of the day, these very same people are going to make it sound like they're doing works. Isn't that strange? Because they're going to bring up things that they did. But believe me, it's not works that he's talking about. He's talking about people that thought they were doing the right thing. Going to church isn't the only thing out here. Reading the Bible, I wonder how many people out here read the Bible every day and are not right with God. If a person's not going to open up that door just a little bit, just enough where God can... He ain't going to enter. I'm telling you. If he gives you up to sin, there's a good chance you never come back. Unless somebody come, somebody out here. Unless, I don't know, man. I have no clue. All I know is this world's bad. And part of the problem is Christians.